That was Lebo with I Love Music. Are you listening to The Honest Truth on Smile 90.4 FM? Now, as always, on a Monday, Andre the Big Positive Guy, he's in studio and joins the conversation on The Honest Truth for your Monday inspiration. Hello, Andre. Hello, Lisa. It's lovely to see you. Yes, lovely to see I, you. I, I, I can't be to too rude to about Benita, but it's lovely to have you in the studio for uh, a change. Yeah, it's lovely The to whole studio space. just feels far more feminine and pretty. <laughs> There's a lot of other reasons for that. <laughs> <laughs> You've got some lovely guests here this evening with us, and, and the one that I've got tonight, uh, I'm delighted to introduce you to Crystal Colnick. Crystal, say hello to the people. Hello, people. Hello, people. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Crystal is, 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 a, is a young author who's just finished her first book called Lessons from the Frogs I've Kissed. You got it right. Um, I, I've managed to get it right. <laughs> and I'm sitting with a copy of it in front of me. It's a nice big fat book. And when I saw the title, it's actually an expression I used to use when I was young. You know, I had to kiss a lot of frogs. So it was interesting for me to hear that. And then I was following the launch of the book. And the funniest thing happened. You've obviously written a book about previous relationships. That's right, yeah. And then you had the book launch. And you've got to start the story at your book launch. launch. Somebody arrived at the launch. (laughs) Okay, let's go for it. (laughs) Well, firstly, it's a book about the last significant relationship. So it's not my whole life. It's the more significant adult ones. And um, yeah, so the, the, the relationships were getting better as I was, I just have to put it there to grab the interest. <laughs> okay, so my book launch was, you know, firstly, it's a surprise party. You never know how many people are going to come. So I went online and I invited everyone and um, 100 people pitched, but there was one special guest. <laughs> I decided to invite one of my ex-boyfriends. And um, he was one of the, I mean, we, yeah, it was, quite a, it was a big ask, but I phoned him and I said, would you, I won't mention names. Um, will you please come to my book launch? He said, oh, I was wondering how the book's going. I said, well, it's done, we're doing it, and there's one more favor. Will you please come dressed in a frog suit? And <laughs> he laughed, and he said, you've got to be joking. And I said, you know me, I'm not joking. And that's all, and I put down the phone, and I just thought I had, oh, sorry, he, said, he actually said, let me read the book first, and I'll let you know. So I put down the phone, and all I could think, I've just got the best idea, this is going to be so funny, and I thought, we'll keep it anonymous if he wanted to. Otherwise, he could unveil himself. But I thought also it would add interest to the story. Like, who is the guy in the frog suit? <laughs> well, I'm not going to give away that because I want the people to read the book. But I think it was tremendously brave of him because I've read the book now. Have you read the whole thing? Uh, just about you know, uh, just in the last two chapters. And the reality is that it's a very hard-hitting book about relationships and things that don't work. And things that don't work, exactly. Yeah. And I, what it is is authentic. So I tried not mm. to throw them under the bus. I definitely didn't want to be a woman, like a man mm. hater. Mm. So I try to be gentle on them. And, um, but at the same time, it is real and mm. stuff happened. And he could have as easily said, there's no way I'm doing this. He could have actually sued me instead of coming in a frog suit. But I thought the backstory is nice because it showed that he was actually, it is, we fri- it's, mm. it, we're friends, it's, it's, it's life, you know, life goes on. It's just a frog I kissed. <laughs> so there's lots of characters in the book. So so it goes through through various stages of your life, and maybe we can start off with Sean, if you can maybe just sort of give a little okay. Sean the... Sean the drug addict. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's where I get everyone's attention. And I mean, it's, it's, it's actually an uncanny thing, because I look at my life now, and I just think like, how, why? And, when I, and I th- we've got a saying that after five years, it's just someone we used to know, they're not mm. exes anymore, <laughs> mm. because of some of the exes that I just couldn't ever come to terms with. So it's short, yeah, Sean's a drug addict who I used to go and visit in mental institutions. It's true. <laughs> and you loved him. And I loved him. And he was my him. first love. I, was t- I totally loved him. I wanted to rescue him. Mm. What can I say? Yeah, he was, um, but yeah, that, that had its course. And then I found myself completely like, who am I? What I loved about the book is it, it's very, very, it's, it's not easy reading, but it's, it's, very, it's, it's very relatable. And so when I see Sean, I actually, out of all the characters, I like Sean the most. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know why. He he's just, still he just, crazy. He, he appealed to me. <laughs> he's still smoking. He's still crazy, and he's still in love with me, actually. Uh, so so, <laughs> so I, I still, I sort of loved him. But, and it's, it progresses through the various relationships. And the next one is, is Pete, the, the abalone poacher. Yes. So, so, so I don't know how much to give because it's quite a, um, I mean, I don't know if I should say the relation on radio yeah, to who he is to yeah. me because it's a bit complicated, but I was married to him yes. and he's actually the father of my children. Yes. So, so I, out of all the lawsuits that I am expecting, if there is one, um, <laughs> it could be be it. A, and we've actually just become friends now. So mm. it's quite a shame. And I did phone him. I phoned all of them and said, mm. look, I'm writing a book. 
and was a, 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 I'm writing a book and mm. you're in it and um, this is what it's about so with him he said as long as you don't hurt the children and I was like okay fine I'm not going to hurt the kids that's yeah. fine yeah, and so tell me a little bit more about some of the other characters. The other characters. Okay, so there's Gary, who was mm -hmm. um, still in love with his, his gay ex-wife. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> And they're not <laughs> fictional characters. These are all real relationships. And uh, so there was a rebound. So each of the relationships mm -hmm. had a significant thing. So there was an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. There was a drug addict, uh, which, and the, which is a rescuing relationship. There was Gary the rebound. And then there was Zach, who um, I, he was still helpless in love with someone else. And then there was finally the breakthrough of the one that loved me more than anything, which is totally unrecognizable, finally, because I seem to be chasing all the others. And then there was my big love, who's actually here you're now. He's standing, standing, standing in the studio us. today. Hi, so, hi, big love. <laughs> yeah, to make this all just a little bit more dramatic, you grew up in the huge metropolis of Nurtuk, <laughs> <laughs> where, the where there's only about a thousand people and you all know each other. And I'm an estate agent. And you're an estate agent and everybody knows who you are. I think that that's why it became a bestseller because I think everyone was like intrigued to know the inside of, of this estate agent's life. And um, and I think what happened is they, they sort of bought the book out of interest and then funnily enough found themselves actually relating to the story. Yes. I think that's what happened. And then they started telling their friends and people started giving it as gifts. And um, But a lot of my clients, I, I, I always want to, I've walked into two or three doing appointments and they're reading my book. Mm. And I'm like, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I just, I, I really, I'm, I want to ask, so are we still good? Uh, or do you still respect me as an estate agent? But they seem to respect me more because mm. it's just, it's, it's just, we're, it's from the heart. Yeah. I think one of the things that, I, that, that amazed me is that even though you were in relationships with these various characters, and, and let's call them the frogs, even though you were in relationships, you had quite a good insight into yourself why you were doing these things. Afterwards, in is retrospect, it all afterwards? it's okay. all afterwards. So, so the book sort of just came. I mean, I don't. It, it wasn't like I've always wanted to write a book. Mm. It just sort of came through me. And they say that there's a book. I, I think it was Liz Gilbert that said, mm. if you knock, there's a book that will like fly around you, and if you don't take it, someone else will. So mm. I felt that it just came to me because one night I just started writing this thing, and the format just came to itself. And all the lessons, they're quite funny because all those things that she's saying are insights, mm. stuff that I learned along the way. And I used to bore Kiko with them saying. Babe, you must remember this and this and, and I kept telling them. He's like, you've told me this a hundred times and now that they're all in the book, I don't have to like remember them anymore. <laughs> so it was like insights that it was profound and I thought like every time someone was going through a breakup, I wanted to say, hey, but there's this and there's that and this is sort of the book that I wanted when I was mm. going through a breakup and it wasn't there, so I had to write it myself. It's very personal. It's the kind of story that I think we do tell to people at times, but this is really, this is really out there. It's oversharing. Have, have you had any sort of negative response to it? Yeah, I, I mean, the art, the art there, it was all or nothing. So I had to, I couldn't just go throw them under the bus. I had to throw myself under the bus yeah. to make them, to do. make it relatable. Yeah. I totally do. So yeah. I think that's important. I think that's what makes it mm. relate, uh, what, what, yeah, what people relate. Um, one of the Frog's girlfriends at the time, well, you know the story, but we don't want to give too much. Mm. Um, yeah, someone was, when was, someone was very upset. She said, I came to a, uh, out for a book launch and I ended up being in a book. Oh, and and we've, <laughs> we've had a few ups and downs of trying to make and I just said, look, I have to explore the characters. I haven't gone and said all the nice things about you. I had to character mm. um, develop mm. and like, you know, and it's also only my interpretation. There's mm. her interpretation, which could be completely different. So, I mean, I really, my last intention was to hurt anyone and I really, mm. because making myself so vulnerable, the last thing mm. I want to do is like, take their choices away, like, oh, well, I'm in a book now and you've tarnished my name. I don't, I, that wasn't my intention. And there are characters in a book. It's, it's, don't apologize too much. I can't. You know, <laughs> no, I read something quite funny about, like, if you don't want to be written about, don't be a... Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Just be nice to people if you don't want someone to write about Crystal, you. what have you actually learned through this process about yourself? About because, myself? Because you, do you do say it in the book? Okay, well, I, I've learned the biggest thing because I realized why I wrote the book. Uh, it is sort of coming to terms with this this person that I was versus who I am now. And also, I mean, I, I, it, it sort of, I mean, the biggest, uh, there, was, there were six significant relationships and the major one was falling in love with myself. And it is self-love. And, and that was, and yeah, so that was the big thing. And looking at in the book, it all sort of makes sense. So it's, I mean, I've learned, I, I've finally learned, when you get to the end, you'll see, why I did the things I did. I've, I've, I accept that I married that person. I accept that I dated that person. I accept all the 
Signa I, all those things which I couldn't quite get into context. I was almost embarrassed about it before. So mm. it was like self-healing. Mm. And I think also just being open and honest and in, in a world where everything's superficial. There's so much Facebook. There's so much social media. And to actually just get real and say, I hurt too. Mm. You know me. I hurt. I'm not perfect. I don't have mm. a perfect life. I might look at, like I've got a great mm. career and all that stuff, but I'm hurting and I'm... I'm it's hard for me too, and I think it makes people feel better about their own lives. Mm. So I took one for the team. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you were a bit of a rescuer. Oh, it's a total rescuer, yeah. The codependency thing was, yeah. I mean, because you need rescuing yourself. So mm. it's like kind of you see something in someone else and you go and say, hang on, you know, and mm. then you don't have to deal with your own problems. And, you know, you can't run away. Well, you can, but I think that's when you end up on antidepressants and mm. you just go down the wrong road. So I think I was lucky that I took the path that I did. And it was a lot of work. And the one mm. thing I can say, it's all work. You have to work all the time on yourself. It's not just off here and do this. And I mean, meditation has become a large part of my life. And mm. if I need to go and see a hypnotist because I'm feeling whatever, I'll do it. whatever I need. And I think it's a big message to people that it doesn't make you crazy. It doesn't mean you've got a head illness. If mm. you need to go to, a, I don't, shrinks don't do too, well, I saw a lot of them <laughs> in the book. But it took me a long time to work through that stuff. But um, healers and whatever do it because it's the life is tough and to just I think it's difficult just having a sense of self and when you get your sense of self life sort of makes much more sense it's a lovely big juicy book if anyone's <laughs> looking for a good juicy yeah. read and you want to find all the ins and outs of what happens really behind yeah. the scenes in Nurtig and Comic <laughs> uh, but how long did this book process actually take, take? I'm aware. <laughs> so the initial book writing took 14, 14 months um, I sorry, four months. I sat there and it just came out the whole story, the back, the back story, and then I read it and it, and um, I thought I've got a book, I've got a book, and that was just the beginning. Then I found a mentor and she rewrote it with me for two years. And when I first went there, I thought I've got the story, and she's like, every sentence begins with an I. Like this is terrible. It's long sentences because I didn't know about writing. We rewrote it and then it went into an extensive um, um, editing process, and so the editing process took four and a half years. And, the four, and four months to write. And Steven Spielberg said, if there's anyone out there wanting to write, don't stop until the story's out. Mm -hmm. If you've got a story, and a lot of people do, sit there, write it, write it, write it, write it, write it, get your manuscript out the way, and then do, because if you stop halfway, you're gonna stop. And I did that. I took my computer, sometimes I wrote one sentence, sometimes seven pages. I never stopped for one day in those four months. So it was quite a, it was, and then the, the fun part is getting it published. Oh, wow, that was a, a journey and a half. I'm sure you've had a, a, a lot of comments and discussions between your husband and yourself. Now, you're standing right behind me, so I'm a bit nervous to say, what's his, been resp his, his response, response to the book? He's just been amazingly supportive, and I think that there wouldn't be a book without him. Mm -hmm. Firstly, he's never read it. He said when it's, when it's done, he'll read it. He still hasn't. When you, you've read his chapters now, when you get to that, it, it's also honest. It's not like all happy roses. It's, it's really exposing our relationship, which is harder to write than the exes. But he's given me his blessing and things that I, I, I okayed everything with him. I said, look, I'm doing this, I'm talking about this, and this is about your parents, and this is about this, and this is about our past, and all the women, are you okay? And he's like, babe, I trust you, go for it, whatever. But he's never read it, and he hasn't read, I told him, like, he hasn't read any of it, but he knows exactly what's in it. And I don't think I can blame him, but he's amazingly supportive. And if anyone took a, a lawsuit against me, he'd be the first one to stand up and... I mean, fight for you. Yeah, one time I thought, let me take it off Amazon so people that I don't, I can sort of monitor who's buying it. <laughs> and then um, that, and then he's like, no way, you, you've, you've come this far, stand behind yourself. And, and, and it's doing well. You're in your second print now, it's going out. It isn't the second bestseller in South Africa, it's the second bestseller in this region, <laughs> uh, which obviously, yeah. obviously everyone that knows her. It's so good for us though. <laughs> it's very good for you. And I see you've bought in a whole lot of, of these books in here. Can I, can yeah, I yeah, give yeah. one away? Yeah, for sure. Go for uh, it. We'll think of something. But one, first, one's for you, by the way. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I'd like to just go to a break quickly, but afterwards we'll have a chat again. Just close off a few things with Crystal. Um, the book we've been discussing is called Lessons from the Frogs I've Kissed. I've made all the mistakes in the book so you don't have to by Crystal Kalnick. You listen to Majorsi with somebody and you're on The Honest Truth with Benita Bergatini, who's on leave at the moment, and I'm sitting here with Liesl Smith. Liesl, lovely mm. to have you in the studio having again. An interesting conversation. We're having a very to. interesting conversation here with Crystal Kolnick, who's got a lovely new book out called Lessons from the Frogs I've Kissed. We're having some very funny messages coming mm. through. I mean, one of the latest ones here yeah. is... Who is the Sean? I also went out with the Sean. <laughs> I was thinking it was the same where person. Where can I get the book? <laughs> where can I get the book? Crystal, where can we get the book? Okay, so it's available in 44 bookstores. I'm not exactly sure where. Um, but any bookstore you can walk into and, order, and they'll order it. And please do, just so I look like an up-and-coming author. <laughs> just walk in there and say, please, can I have that book? Lessons from the Frogs of Kiss. Not, 
frogs on the lessons. <laughs> it's very wordy. <laughs> and then, yeah, so, and also it's um, are available on Amazon, and I've got a website that can order directly through me as well. So it's pretty available. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's an amazingly good book. I think it touches on subjects on relationships that I think most of us have had at least one of these. Uh, and or maybe and, more. And maybe more, <laughs> and then it's turned out well. Yeah. Now, you've been very kind, and you've actually donated one of these books to one lucky listener. So we've been trying to work out how we can give this away. So I'm going to give this book away to the first person who SMSs me on 35904 and tells me the name of the author. First person to phone in. Tell us the name of the author who will win this book, Lessons from the Frogs I've Kissed. Crystal, is there another book in you? Oh, that's a, everyone asks that. I'm like, it's only been two and a half weeks, guys. <laughs> um, it's, I've thought about it even when I was writing it. And actually, um, the second part, which could happen, is that I went through a very sticky, di um, not divorce, but I got sued hmm. by um, my ex, one of them. And it was, it was a whole big sticky court case. And mm. I thought that there could be a book in there to help people in a similar position. That mm. would definitely mm. be so. Because I couldn't go and like write a novel now. I don't know. If, I still don't mm. think I know how to write. Mm. So it was, it was sort of like that I think would be a great follow on. Because it was, it was also when I was looking, when I was going through it, I was actually, um, interestingly enough, sued for parental alienation. And um, they, I went through a three-year court, um, yeah, a whole big legal battle. And I mean, I suppose if you want to find out more, you can read the book. But um, at, when I was looking, I was really going online trying to find information as someone that's been through it. And also, mm -hmm. like, it's interesting with the law, the legal system, how um, kids and women aren't necessarily protected in this country. And what I learned, and it's sort of, if you've got a lot of money to throw at it, you can get places. But if you don't, you, you know, so it was, it was quite a, it was, it was quite a journey. And I think that would be the next book. I just have to wait until that thing comes to my door and, and <laughs> gives it to me. Well, you've obviously touched somebody's heart because the people are all buying the books. So if you want to read, what do a dope addict, an abusive fisherman, a man in love with his gay ex-wife, the eternal bachelor, he who made me the center of his universe, and a sexy Chilean all have in common. It all comes from the book called Lessons from the Frogs I've Kissed, from Crystal Kaldek. And Crystal, thank you so much for coming into the studio all the way from Newark. Thank you very much. Thanks for this opportunity. Can I just say one thing? Sure. I, when I was writing the book, I, I kept listening to authors on mm. the radio, and I was like, I'm going to get there one day, and thank you. So I really, um, I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. I hope the book keeps selling out at a rapid rate of months. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Crystal.